Hello everybody, welcome back with another Minecraft plugin development video. Today, I am going to be teaching you how to add custom villager traits from scratch and even how to open virtual inventories, meaning even if you don't have a villager run running nearby. Before we crack into it, I just wanted to say that if you want to learn your own Minecraft plugins, improve your Java skills, and maybe build an amazing server, or even get into video game development, we have a program that I built in the last year called Project Orion. It comes with a full 30-day money-back guarantee. If you don't like it, no hard feelings, we can still be friends, you can still keep watching my free tutorial. And it also comes with certification. We had over 3,000 students join it to date. The results have been amazing. You can see pe what people are saying at mineacademy.org slash reviews. And I will leave the course link in this video description. Okay, so first things first, I made a new listener class listening to inventory open event because first thing I want to show you is how to intercept and how to edit already existing recipes. Now, if you don't know what event handler means and why we have to listen to this and how to listen for game events, I do have a separate training for events. I think it's one of the first five videos in this very series. And if you struggle understanding what is public, what is class, what is these weird syntax, right? You need to learn Java. Again, we have Project Orion that requires no previous coding skills and also includes a full Java course, which you can check out in the video description below. Now, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna ask if the inventory that is being opened is an actual merchant inventory, because this is what, the one that we need. And if you open up the class, you're gonna see that we can actually get the merchant. Now, the merchant is not an entity. And this is good because Bucket lets us create virtual inventories without villagers. So they've basically placed all the logic in a separate class. So here, here I can just call inventory get merchant and on inside this class, I can just print out every recipe that we have and even iterate for all merchant recipes. And I can just show you how this will work. Also to get the actual villager, you need to get the inventory so maybe I can just call this like this. It doesn't really matter. And then get holder. Now the holder is going to be the actual entity. So you have to cast it to an actual entity. If you want to villager, villager, villager like this. However, I do recommend you check if the entity is null and then you return the code, because if you open up the inventory via a command that I'm going to show you in a few minutes, this is going to be null. Okie dokie, let me show you this in the game. So if I spawn a villager, it doesn't work because he doesn't have a profession yet. I'm gonna show you how to bypass that in a second. I have to literally spawn this thing right here to make sure that he gets the librarian profession. I don't know why it doesn't work. All right, let me just keep spawning them. There we go. Now he's not, no longer jobless. And if I open it, you can see in the console that there's two recipes, first one taken in paper, the other one emerald and a book. Right, and pay attention to the air right here, which means that there is no secondary requirement. And the second one will me will give me a book with a certain enchantment. Great. Now to edit this, you have to be careful because if you attempt to edit the recipes, you will get an issue. Uh, the documentation says that it's immutable. I'm not a native English speaker. I got really confused. I did not understand the word. It means non-modifiable. Right? So you cannot really do anything. So what we have to do, just create a new list and then you can customize it. Now I'm going to be creating new custom item stack with nether brick as a, as a material. And I'm going to be giving it a custom display name. If you don't know what this means or how it works, check out my video about custom items. So that's going to be the first recipe. And then to create a first recipe, logically, you can just call merchant recipe first recipe, and then just initialize it with a new constructor. If I open up this, it'll give you a complete mess of options. There's tons of them. So I do recommend you study this and you just see for yourself. However, the easiest one is just putting inside the custom brick as the result of the trade. So meaning what is going to be here instead of Emerald, I want to have nether brick. And then the 10,000 means how many times I can trade using this recipe. So I just put in 10,000 for unlimited. So, and then what we have to do is add ingredients. Remember, first one was Emerald, second one is a book, or here was paper and the second one was air. By the way, you don't need to add air. 
So first recipe, first ingredients is going to be, say, one piece of nether star. And this can be it. However, I also want to make sure to have a secondary one, which is going to be seven pieces of diamond. This code is not finished because uh, the first recipe is not registered anywhere. So we have to add it to the list right here. So new recipes add our custom recipe. And then what we have to do is call merchant.set recipes and then simply overwrite the old recipes there. Now, of course, what if you just want to edit one recipe and instead of, you know, taking over control the entire thing? Well, there is a method called set recipe taken in the I, which is the index, right? So you can simply iterate in this loop and there's multiple ways to do it. I guess the most the most the easiest one is going to be this one, right? And then here, um, yeah, so you can basically call merchant dot set recipe at this index is going to be another one, right? If, for example, you don't like the result type and you want to change all Emerald to something else, right? So I will leave this up to you. I think this is a little bit more of Java knowledge than actual logic here. Great. And now if I open up any librarian, I can see that it needs a piece of nether star and also seven diamonds. There we go. And now I have a hell break, which is amazing. Now, of course, um, this is going to work for any basically entity of villager that you open, which is not good. So what I do recommend you check out the video about persistent metadata because the, these villagers can store persistent data containers and you can basically mark them. So if you want to have a plugin that will uh, be configurable from a settings file, I also have a video about config here for free on this YouTube channel. Watch that first. And then you say configure all these recipes in a config, you type a command and then it's going to basically open up, it's going to spawn a custom villager with these custom settings, right? Then you need to mark uh, the custom villager with an invisible tag that I talk about in another video. So pretty much I have videos for custom items, persistent data containers called persistent metadata, something like that, and then also for settings. So you can just pick and learn whatever you need to. The next part of this video will be talking about virtual inventories, meaning how to open up these inventories without having to have a villager, right? Or perhaps what if you just have a villager that doesn't have a profession, you can't open him. Well, in this case, you actually need to go to your inventory listener and then you need to have another listener listening to another event called entity player interact entity event here. And then if the um, event get right clicked is a villager right here. You can do the logic that I'm about to show you in the trade command. So I have a video on how to make commands. I'm not going to talk how to make commands for the next 10 minutes. Just make sure to register it inside your main plugin class inside git command and then set ex executor and also go ahead, open up your plugin YML file and then register it under the command section. As you can see, we have a lot of code here because I'm constantly updating the plugin throughout this series. Anyways, so how to create a virtual inventory? All you have to do is call bucket create merchant. By the way, never call create inventory and then inventory type merchant. This is not going to work. It's a little bit of a trick. So we have to call create merchant right here. And then here you can just put in the title. So the title is whatever shows, uh, whatever shows, where's this villager right here. So instead of librarian, it's going to say minion and the green color is not really pretty, but it's just the demo purpose. And then you can basically do whatever we did, right? Because the merchant is the same merchant as we had inside the listener. Where is that right here? So I'm not going to waste your time. I just made an example to show you the difference, right? So I placed a diamond as a result and paper as the first ingredients and the only ingredient right there. And then finally, you need to call player dot open merchant and then place in the class right here. And then you need to force it. Otherwise, it will not work properly. All right. And now if I type in slash merchant, you can see it says minion. It needs a paper to produce diamonds. And this is different from this, right? So you can create multiple custom recipes. Similar, similarly, if you want to force a villager without a profession to have uh, a trade system, then right here inside this code, you just basically would need to copy this code 
and then place it right here. Maybe you can also set the event to cancel just to be sure that it doesn't do anything else and it also doesn't conflict with any other plugin. And then right here, this one should be event get player and pretty much this code should now work the same. Anyways, guys, that's it for today. Please give it a thumbs up, subscribe and comment below because YouTube needs that data to show this to more people because we still don't have a lot of traffic. So if you enjoyed this tutorial, all you can do is give it a nice thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, maybe check out Project Orion if you want to learn more crazy tutorials like that. And I will see you guys next time. Thank you and take care.